Welcome to the world's first video introduction to fascial fitness. In the following minutes you will learn how to specifically train your connective tissues in your body. You will learn how to train your fascial body such that it becomes better tonified, more injury resistant, more flexible and more fun to live in. Before we start with the introduction and the exercises, let me explain that this first video, from which this is an English translation, was produced for a German audience. In doing so, we tried our best to address the preference of our German countrymen for seriousness and depth of meaning. However, as a more international audience, please don't allow that emphasis to give you the wrong impression that these exercises could be dry and without much fun. On the contrary, be prepared that when experimenting with the fascial movements shown here, that this will most likely trigger a great sense of fun, usefulness and playful pleasure. That's Welcome okay. to the first exercise course for specific fascia training. My name is Robert Schleib and I'm director of the Fascia Research Project at the University of Ulm. Together with my fascial fitness colleagues, I will introduce exercises to improve strength and suppleness in the connective tissue system. Until now, the focus in sports has been on the musculature, on cardiovascular conditioning and on neuromuscular coordination. Interestingly, most sports injuries, however, involve connective tissue structures that are part of the fascial network. Tearing of red muscle fibers or bony stress fractures occur much more rarely in comparison. Most of the time, the overuse injuries involve ligaments, tendons, joint capsules and other fascial tissues that are not sufficiently prepared for this amount of loading. Consequently, we suggest complementing the existing strengths, endurance and coordination trainings with additional exercises in order to specifically train the fascial tissues. Let's get ready for our first small fascia exercise, which will be demonstrated by Devo Miller. In a seated position, bend forward according to your comfort level. Stay there for two to three seconds and then return to an upright spine. Repeat this movement and now pay attention how you initiate the straightening of the spine, probably by engaging the muscles of your back. This is a common movement where your muscles initiate the main movement against gravity. Now compare and differentiate this with movement styles at which your fascia does the main upwards movement. Bend forward as before and stay there for a short while. But now activate your abdominal muscles to bend the trunk even further forward, then allow a passive recalling motion to straighten the spine. The exercise you just saw involves the capacity of fascia to store kinetic energy, which we will explain later in the theoretical part of this video. Let us now introduce the main principles of this training program. We propose the following five guidelines. Number one, the preparatory counter movement. Before you perform the actual movement, start with a gentle pre-movement in the opposite direction. This increases the collagenous pretension and also the body axis slightly lengthens to intensify the elastic recoil. Number two, we try to move as silently as possible. Number three, long chains are better than short ones. Instead of the conventional isolated stretching of singular muscles, we engage long myofascial chains. The longer, the better. We vary stretching and movement directions constantly and gently in order to optimally stimulate the appropriate fascial sheaths. Number four, less is more. Please don't overtax the fascia. Unlike the muscles, it is enough to work with rather low loading forces. Number five, and finally, awareness and perception are everything. Use these exercises to fine-tune your kinesthetic awareness. The more alert and joyful you are, the more you will experience the fine nuances of these exercises. The exercises consist of four groups, fascial release, fascial stretch, rebound elasticity and fluid refinement.
Take a stand with the right foot in front of the other, looking like you've just taken a step. Then place a tennis ball or similar under your right foot. At first position the ball under the Twinsberg arch at the front of your foot just behind your toes. Now gradually shift more and more weight from your left foot onto the ball under your right foot. Feel the pressure pushing into the sole of your foot. Slowly add more weight to your front leg and stop at the point where you feel a pleasant but at the same time intense release. Next, move your foot more towards on the ball, so the ball is moved a little closer towards your heel. It's important that you make slow and gradually changes, as well as you apply downward pressure. Really focus your attention on the bottom of your foot. Notice the sensations in the sole of the foot as you allow the tissues there to slowly and gently melt into the pressure of the ball. Lay down on your right side. Support your upper body on your right forearm. Your right elbow should be directly under your right shoulder. Place the roller directly below the outside of the bony point of the right hip, while placing the left foot in front. To support your upper body, you may as well use your left hand to stay balanced. Now, roll very slowly from the outside of your hip along and downwards to your right knee. To get into the quality of the movement, imagine the tissues of your upper leg being like a sponge that you're squeezing out from top to bottom. If you come across spots that feel more sensitive or even painful, pause there for 30 seconds to a minute, allowing the roller to slowly melt and release the tissues. Remember to keep your head in elongation of your spine. Don't allow your upper body to hang or sag. Use a gentle push of your lower arm into the floor to extend the spine. When you get above your knee, slowly roll back up again your leg to the outside of your hip. As the roller passes over the same areas again, you'll likely already notice a pleasurable feeling of release. Next, take the roller from under your leg and notice how your thigh now feels. It's likely that the whole fascial network of your leg will feel more supple and you'll find into a healthy and more balanced tension. Lie on your back and put the roller just below your shoulder blades. Link your hands behind your head and point your elbows upwards. Now push your feet into the floor and lift your hips a little. This will increase the pressure on the roller. Play gently with small movements on the roller with individual areas of your spine. Very small movements up your back and down or shift your weight a little from side to side. Next, lower your hips to the floor and lie on your back. Feel what has changed as you take some deep breaths and allow your back to relax even more. Finally, push into the floor with your feet to actively increase the tension of your body. As you slowly bring the upper body in a sitting position, Elingrating from the top of your skull. Still listening? Let me remark again to the international audience of this DVD that the following movements tend to go along with much more fun, playfulness and acceleration than we tend to convey to the original German audience of this video.
For this exercise, you'll need something stable like a chair to put one of your legs on. You should feel stable on your weight-bearing leg. It's best to bend your knee a little. Now, bend your upper body over the leg on the chair. You should feel a gentle, elongating stretch at the back of your thigh. Try to maintain this pretension throughout the exercise. Start playing actively into the stretching of these often shortened muscles of the posterior muscle chain. For example, by slightly rotating your leg to the inside or to the outside. You can also vary the stretch by slightly straightening your standing leg or increasing the bend at the knee a bit. Think about creating length as you enjoy a good cat body stretch. Don't forget to pay attention to your upper body at the same time. Pull the tips of your shoulder blades slightly back and down, as well as you keep your chest bone open and soft. More advanced movers can enhance this exercise by opening the posterior muscle group from the other end, starting at the pelvis. Here, you can play with tiny movements in the pelvis and the upper body, noticing the effects and changes of the fascial sheet that runs down the back of the leg into the foot. Try a few pulsing stretches on your own in the range of subtle to larger movements as well as from rather simple connections to discover the more complex fascial network. We invite you to explore and lengthen the entire posterior chain from top to toe. Position yourself next to a chair with your feet about shoulder width apart. Place your hands flat on the seat in the same width as your feet with your arms fully extended. Keep your hips over your heels. Think of your head as an extension of your spine. Your gaze is soft and facing the floor as you gently create more length throughout your back. Initiate the movement by slightly bending the knees and at the same time softly extending the tip of your coccyx, the cat body tail, growing into the space behind you, towards the ceiling. Next, lift your head and look forward, enjoying the extension of your neck muscles. Focus on the support of your hands and feet as you completely relax your belly so that your spine can rest and hang, being supported by your extremities. Now, start to raise your right sit bone as you straighten your right knee. Your weight should naturally shift to your left foot. At the same time, spread the fingers on your right hand into the air. Lifting them off the chair surface, think of stretching your claws. Your eyes follow the movements of the fingers of your right hand. Similar to the whole body stretch of a big cat, engage the entire right side of your body into a multidirectional stretch. Imagine yourself to become a wild cat, yawning and stretching with a sense of ease and pleasure. Relax, bend your right knee and return to the starting position. Now, let's lengthen the left sit bone. Reach up and back as you straighten your left leg. Feel the claws of your left hand reaching out. Lift your fingers from the chair while looking at your left hand. Tend. Again, reach and stretch like a big cat. And then return to the starting position. In the next step, you'll be lengthening both sit bones up and back, slowly straightening your legs and in the maximal reach, the sit bones pull the heels off the ground, moving your spine to stretch upwards like the arched back of a cat.
Push into your hands and your toes, as if you would feel your paws touching the floor and the chair, so to increase the upward curve of your spine. Allow your belly to stay soft. Focus on your spine as you feel the powerful connection between your cat's paws in front, as well as your rear paws. Lower your tailbone and the top of your head slightly as the endpoints of the spine coming together. Next, let your heels return to the floor. Bend your knees slightly and in getting the endpoints further apart, elongating your back again. The sit points reach back and up and the top of your head reaches forwards and up. Enjoy the natural lengthening through your spine. Finally, take a step or two towards the chair and roll up into a standing position. Stand upright with your feet parallel about the width of your hips. Starting with your head, roll forward one vertebra at a time. Bend your knee as much as you need to as you keep rolling forward until your palms are touching the ground, just in front of your toes. Now, start walking on your hands forward, step by step, until you get into a quadruped position on your hands and feet. Enjoy the feeling of length between the back of your head and the tip of your tailbone. Continuously flow of movement, slowly take small steps forward with your feet until they are once again just behind your hands. Pay attention to your feet as you move. With every step feel your heel come off the ground as the weight shifts to your toes. Feel the stretch extending up the back of your leg. Play with slight angle changes by using more of the outside and sometimes more of the inside of your foot, as well as varying how much you're bending your knees. Rediscover the whole length of your legs from the soles of your feet, which are connecting with the ground, all the way up to the extension of your sit bones into the sky. With every small step, stay connected to your pelvis and allow the sit bones to swing and lengthen as they extend upwards. With every small step, stay connected to your pelvis and allow the sit bones to swing and lengthen as they extend upwards. As soon as your feet reach your hands, the hands take over and walk in small steps forward again. And so on. It's not about walking quickly, but more essential is to experiment creatively paying attention to details and shifts in moving. For finishing up, slowly roll up one vertebra at a time and return to an upright position while keeping your knees slightly bent. Think of your head as the top end of your spine. Take a big step forward. Your feet should be wide enough apart that you can bend your front knee, yet no more than 90 degrees. This position might be challenging for your lower back, so it's important to slightly tighten your belly muscles. This will enhance the stability of your lower back and support a sense of grounded and fluid strength. Next, hold the bar with your hands wider than shoulder width and play with the idea of an interconnected tensional web opening into the connection along the front of your body, running from your abdominals through your arms to your hands, without lifting your shoulders. This will create a slight feeling of extension through your upper body. Remember to keep your trunk stable with the support of your abdominal muscles while finding the internal tensional connection from the back of your foot along your leg into the upper body spreading into your hands. It's fun to play with these spreading connections. One option is to lengthen along the fascial lines, another to twist and turn in spiral and curves or to move into a large upper body stretch through a wide circular range, as shown here. Make sure to keep the body wide tension. 
As mentioned before, your creativity may guide you to regain new areas of facial connections and, at the same time, enjoy a vital feeling of spacious lengthening. Now the real fun begins. The following exercises are at the core of this facial fitness training. These more dynamic exercises can be very invigorating and tend to go along with a sense of childlike fun. However, we recommend that you start them easy and softly because the intense fun factor involved often seduces people to exaggerate the motions up to the level of tissue strain injuries. So please enjoy the fun and acceleration, but don't fly off with these exercises too rapidly until you are more accustomed to them. Stand with your feet about shoulder width apart and your knees slightly bent. Tilt your hips slightly forwards. Hold the weight with both hands, lift it over your head and then start with a slow whipping movement. The forward motion of the pelvis serves as the origin for the following whip-like movement by then passing this impulse into the upper body and arms. This wave-like movement rhythmically loads and unloads the fascial tissue in the front of the body. See, if you can find a smooth and regular rhythm, that works best for you. Once you've found a flowing rhythm, you can use the pretension of your body to release the fascia by elastically swinging forward and down. Again, initiating that forward movement with the pelvis. Move the weight dynamically between your legs as far as it wants to go. Think of this end position as a dynamic turnaround point and then swing back to the starting position. Find into the ideal rhythm of the movement, which is characterized by a sense of ease and flow. To enhance the sense of fluidity, you can coordinate your breathing with this flying sword motion. In swinging up, breathe in. In swinging downwards, allow your breath to go out. With a little bit of practice, you can add an additional element in order to train your facial network in all three dimensions. To begin with, find into the flying sword rhythm. The next time you're at the top, start a circular movement to the back, to the right or left with the upper body. This sideways motion will load your fascia even more intensely. Return to the center and swing your upper body down this time diagonally past one of your legs. In a dynamic circular swing, move back up again, ideally in a flowing rhythm. The circular movement of the arms can be alternated, starting once from the left and next time from the right. Repeat and play with all of those different variations of the flying sword. Stand upright and relaxed. Place the palm of your hand on the end of the bar. Now start gentle jumps while supporting yourself on the bar according to your needs. The softer you land on the ball of your foot and the least sound you produce, the better. Think gentle shock absorber. You can jump with both feet at the same time or alternately jump with one leg and then with the other. Invent your own creative jumps, simply be bouncy, so that your feet push down into the floor just for an instant before moving up again. Here are two more options for making the training more intense. Use a stepper for the bar jumps. Outdoor, find small walls or fences and perform the exercise without supporting bars. Stand with your feet hip width apart, your knees slightly bent and your pelvis tilted slightly forward. Take a weight in both hands and lift it over your head. Now describe a circle in movement over your head with the weight. Finish one circle in one direction, then shift the direction and circle in the opposite direction. Make sure that the movement is performed by using only your arms and torso. 
The pelvis and legs provide a powerful base of support. Elongate the head softly upwards of growing long as you circle the arms around. Enjoy an elegant and flowing movement quality. Stand about a meter from the wall, your feet hip width apart. Reach for the wall and let yourself fall forward. Keep tension in your body as you bounce off the wall like a rubber ball. Try to balance the load between both arms. Remember to keep a stable tension through your midsection to avoid too much rounding in your lower back or a collapsing in the trunk. A quick and elastic push against the wall will bounce you back into the starting position. As a next step, add some lateral variations. First, put a little bit more weight through one side, then again through the middle, moving to the other side. You can as well play with a full body turn and bounce back to the wall. See if you can keep an elastic full body tension in your body as you play with the variations. Have fun with a regular and flowing motion. Upwards in your chest to your head, into your arms, hands and fingers, and downwards into your pelvis to your legs, feet and toes. When you breathe out, imagine breathing out from your navel in the middle of your body. Keep this image until you can clearly feel the fine movements throughout your whole body. Keep this subtle breathing sensation as you focus. This will help you to avoid creating any unnecessary effort and tension. Now feel the inner space of your body and the expansion that's happening in all directions inside you. From inside out, from top to bottom, from front to back, from side to side. Focus on feeling the special dimensions of your body. Pay attention to the feeling inner connections, your arms and legs, your head down to your tailbone. Everything is connected. From this inner connectedness, allow the wave motion of your breath, the expansion and the pulling together that follows to become larger and larger. Start with small inner movements that extend out to extremities, stretch and sink backwards. Find your inner rhythm as you pay attention to your breath. Play with the idea that your arms and legs extend out from your navel at the very center of your body. Feel the connection between your center and your limbs. Enjoy the feeling as your breath rises and falls. Slowly allow the movements to become more active. Let your whole body stretch, wiggle and roll. There are many possibilities here for you to explore. You can play with the idea that all your movements are originating from the center and feel this connection. You can try rolling to one side and curling up similar to an embryo. Can you feel how you're being supported by the floor? Allow yourself to be curious about your arm and leg movements. Effortlessly reach and stretch from your center out to your fingertips and to the tips of your toes. Let yourself grow long as you gently roll back onto your back. Again, notice the feeling of connection between your limbs and the inside of your body as you roll onto one side, back onto your back and then onto the other side. Pay attention to the qualities of pulling inwards and reaching out. Feel how you contact the floor. Maybe you can also feel the air on your skin and the temperature of the space around you. Take your time and deeply enjoy sensing the fine details of your movements.
Hi, also from my side to the international audience viewing the English translation of this video. I hope that besides all the focus and detail which we emphasized so far in our first German version, that you also get a sense of the joyful and youthful pleasure of fascial fitness. In fact, I know of hardly any better exercises to regain a similar feeling of pleasure and fun inside your body. Lie down on your back with your arms straight over your head. Your legs should also be straight, but leave some space between your feet. Feel the weight of your body and your contact with the floor. Notice the outline of your body, its length, width and depth. Pay attention to your breath, how it moves and touches you from inside. While still laying flat on the floor, begin to move your right arm. Start with your fingers, then your whole hand, your lower arm, then your upper arm. Find an internal flow of movement and try to use as little effort as possible. Move without tension. Experiment with the idea that the bones in your arms and upper body can float inside you. Bit by bit, your movements should become larger and take up more space. Your hands reach in varying directions into the space around your body, left, right, upwards or even under your body. Pretend that there's something on your back that you try reaching. Try getting along and spreading out with gentle and snake-like movements. Your eyes should be following the movement of your hand. Feel the different qualities of your movements. Notice the soft way your arm reaches and the extension through your fingers. Turn your attention inward and feel the stretching going on inside your body. The movements of your arms and even of your eyes initiate a rotating movement in your spine. Pay attention to the tiny impulses that start the movements. Maybe you feel your shoulder blade being pulled by your fingers, the lengthening of the side of your body as your rib basket gets longer. Feel how the stretch extends into your right leg and foot. The more you explore reaching out and backward with your hand, the more clearly you feel how the rest of your body is being stretched as well. Notice how the right side of your body is being gently lifted from the floor as you roll. Pay attention to the pleasant stretch sensations along the surface and your body between your right hand and your right foot. When you're lying face down, let your arms and legs spread out more. Enjoy the contact with the floor. Feel your weight and the movement of your breath. Now begin moving the toes of your right foot. The movement starts in your foot and progresses to your ankle and through your lower leg. Leave your leg resting on the floor as you feel the movement now in your knee and then your thigh. Explore all the tiny movements that you can find. Then the right foot leads the way as you roll onto your back. Imagine that your right leg wants to move to the left, crossing over the other leg. From your toes, let your leg be gently pulled in that direction. The movement comes from within. As your toes reach, sense the stretch this creates through your hips and upper body and how this feels just right. Slowly roll onto your back with a flowing motion. Now it's time for the other side. Start again with a sense of curiosity, this time focusing on your right hand as you reach out to the left. Lie down on your side. Your bottom leg is straight and the top leg should be extended to the floor in front. Actively push into the floor, connecting your big toe with your smallest toe and the outside of your heel with the floor. Let your foot reach into the floor holding these three points and from there elongate the outside of your leg all the way up to the outside of the point of your hip. Then move to the ball of your foot and with a pulling intention stretch the length of the back of the leg all the way up to your lower back. Next bend your knee and pushing slowly the whole leg in the front starting from the tip of your foot. Imagine that you're trying to push away a wall made of paper. Once you're at your limit, 
even stretch a little bit further. Once for your heel and then once for each of your toes. Make sure that you stay on your side as you push in front. Then bend your knee again slightly, extending into another vector. This time push your leg outwards like a telescope starting from your lower back and extend the tip of the telescope even a little further. From there play with variations, adding slight rotations and angular changes in order to stimulate different areas of the fascial web. Imagine that your leg becomes like the tentacle of an octopus that's curiously exploring the space around you. You might even want to reach into the back. Lastly, stretch your tentacle towards the ceiling, first through your heel and then through each individual toe reaching up into the sky. Challenge yourself by a slow motion float back down to the ground while extending the leg even further the lower you get. Enjoy length and the elastic connection from the tip of the foot into the core, then resting on the floor again. The final part is to bring your knee to your chest and rolling from the side onto your back while paying attention to the slight shifts and contact points, softly pushing down into the ground. Instead of one large macroscopic movement, play with a bunch of refined and tiny micro movements throughout your back, especially around your lumbar area. The more refined you can become, the better for the health of your lower back. Roll to the other side and start over with the other octopus leg. Connect your feet with the floor and bend your knees slightly. Start a front-to-back wave-like movement with your lumbar spine. As a feedback you can put one hand on your lower abdomen and the other on your back, sending the spinal waves between your hands. Find into a continuous and flowing movement. Once you get the feeling that the movement is pleasurable and at ease, put a little bit more emphasis on the backwards wave movement. It's as if you're pulling your lower belly backwards toward your lumbar spine, release the tension and let the spine swing forward again. It might almost feel like your lumbar vertebras are being massaged from within. Now move the spinal wave motion up to your theoretical spine. Move your hands up as well, using them to locate the undulations and bring it between your hands with a pulsing flow as if fluidity is moving along the front of your spine. Now move up a bit further between your shoulder blades. Send the wave-like movement between the vertebras and your sternum and pulse it back and forth again. From there we change the flow into a side-to-side -side movement. Place your hands on the sides of your rib basket and start moving like a river from one side to the other. Feel into the aquatic quality of the muscles and the soft tissues, especially into the fish-like muscles between your ribs and the ones deep inside around single vertebrae. Play back and forth with tiny and subtle, in contrast with more spread and larger motions from front to back or from side to side. In a third step we add a three-dimensional circular motion. Start with a figure 8 motion from your left chest across the internal space to your right shoulder blade. From there we move the figure 8 upwards to our head and even in the sky above and into your pelvis and the earth below. Take your time and feel the endless possibilities for flow in all directions of your rib basket. 
play with different directions, variations and qualities. Finally, bringing the active movements to a close and opening your attention for the internal echoes of sensation and the movements in the soft tissues, between your ribs and around your spine. Maybe you can become like a tissue whisperer being softly rocked and moved by the flow of the tissues from within. Here we get into a stable position with your legs approximately two shoulder width apart. Anchor your feet into the ground by emphasizing the contact with your big toes and the outside of your heels. Bend your knees slightly and reach into the space behind through lengthening your tailbone. Extend the top of your head forwards in the opposite direction so your spine elongates into a soft stretch. For the easier variation, Put your hands on your thighs to support yourself, using the support of your hands and arms and stay rather upright. The lower you bend down and the less support of your arms, the more challenging the position and the more demanding the movement will be. Pull your shoulder blades down to your tail while opening your chest bone softly. In this position we are waking the cobra with the various snake-like spinal undulations we did before, starting with the front-to-back movement between the sternum and the shoulder blades. Keep your lower back stable and remember to elongate the tailbone as well as the top of your head. From there, move into the side-to-side -side motion, flowing like a river into the sides of your rib basket, even between your arms, changing into subtle wave motions between individual ribs. From there, find into circular motions like figure eights and spirals. Dance the spine into the movements of the snake and allow yourself to become creative, experimenting with spacious directions and changes in size and quality of the movements. To finish up, slowly decrease the size of your wave motions until they become tiny, yet active micro movements around single vertebrae. Slowly return to an upright position. Pause for a moment and enjoy the echoes of the pulsing movements inside your body. Actually, what is fascia? Reach and grasp the outside of your upper thigh and compare it with the inside of your thigh. Most likely the outside will feel stronger than your inside. It has less to do with the underlying musculature than with the surrounding fascial stocking, the so-called fascia lata. This fibrous connective tissue layer gets formed and strengthened by daily activities such as walking. If you were to ride a horse for 10 hours per day and you had to hold on to the horse's back with your legs, the opposite would hold true and your inner thighs would be firmer than your outer ones. You'll find similar strong connective tissue layers in the plantar fascia of the foot, the low back and the neck. These strong connective tissue layers are called fascia and they are usually described together with other collagenous connective tissue structures such as ligaments, tendons, joint capsules, muscular envelopes, etc. In the new field of fascia research, all these tissues are less seen as separate structures, but as local adaptations of a body-wide interconnected tensional network that adjusts its fiber arrangement to specific demands. You could say that the body consists of one large single fascial leotard that organizes itself into hundreds of bags, pockets, interconnected belts and slings. This fibrous collagenous network continuously adapts its architecture to daily movement demands.
For a long time, fascia was neglected in the medical field as well as in sports, and fascia has therefore been called the Cinderella tissue of musculoskeletal medicine. Even today, medical students are taught to start their medical dissection classes by cleaning away all these whitish, irregular connective tissues in order to reveal the underlying muscles and organs. The connective tissue has been mostly considered a mere filling and packing material. However, the first fascia research congress at Harvard Medical School in 2007 paved the way for the understanding that fascia is much more than incidental. It creates an all-encompassing body-wide tensional network that plays a significant role in muscular force transmission and it strongly influences posture as well as our muscular resting tension. In addition, Fascia is richly innervated by sensitive nerve receptors that respond to stretch impulses and that continuously inform us about our posture and our individual body movement. The fascial network thus forms the most important and richest sensory organ for our so-called sixth sense, the sensation of our body in physical space. Fascia is populated by contractile cells that help to regulate the fascial tension independent from the musculature. Through the activity of the cells, fascia slowly adapts its stiffness to daily stress and training impulses. It constantly rebuilds the density and cross-linking of its collagenous network. In a healthy body, Approximately one-third of the collagen fibers are renewed after six months, and after one year already half of our collagen fibers are replaced with new ones. Our intention is to influence this replacement with specific training activities to result in an unbreakable bodysuit that is highly elastic, glides smoothly, and is strong at exactly those places where more strength and resilience are needed. Fascia also has an amazing capacity to store and release kinetic energy. Scientists first discovered this phenomenon in Australian kangaroos, which can jump much farther than can be explained by the force of the contraction of their leg muscles. Closely analyzing the spring-like action, the scientists discovered the so-called catapult mechanism. The tendons and the fascia of the legs are pretensioned like elastic bands, and the release of this stored energy is what makes the amazing jumps possible. A wave-like collagen structure allows the stretch of the tension to be stored and then released without significant energy loss into friction and heat. Not surprisingly, the same mechanism is used by gazelles when they are in motion. These animals are also capable of impressing leaping and running without a particularly strong muscle corset. The use of modern portable ultrasound equipment in recent years led to the discovery of a similar orchestration of loading between muscle and fascia in human movement. It was a surprise that the kinetic storage capacity in humans' leg fascia is similar to that of the gazelles. Not only in jumping or running, but also during walking, a significant part of the kinetic energy comes from the dynamic springiness of our fascia. This new discovery has led to an active revision of movement science. In the past, the assumption was that a muscular joint movement involved shortening the muscle fibers and that the tendons would change their lengths to a much lesser degree as they are seen as mere passive transmitters of the muscular tension. This is still true in slow movements or steady locomotion such as bicycling. The muscle fibers actively change lengths, while the wide tendons and the upper neurosis scarcely grow longer and passively transfer the tensile force. In elastic springy movements, however, the opposite happens. The muscle fibers hardly change their lengths, they contract rather isometrically, while the tendons and the fascial elements function in an elastic way with movement similar to that of an elastic spring. They lengthen and shorten, and during the shortening phase they produce the actual movement.
In our facial fitness training, we use this effect specifically. It relies on the fact that the body's connective tissue adapts its architecture to specific demands. A bone not only gets stronger through stress or weak because of a lack of gravity, but also the fascial network adapts and conforms to various forms of loading, stretching and gliding. Healthy fascia, especially in young people, often has a lattice-like architecture similar to the elasticity of ladies' stockings. In the absence of local stretching, additional crosslinks are then developed. The tissues then adhere and stick together and in the worst cases, the fascia becomes stuck together and its architecture seems matted. The goal of this fascial fitness training is therefore to stimulate the cells with specific stretching and elastic spring-like movements to model a useful or gazelle-like architecture. We recommend training your fascia two to three times a week with a selection of these exercises. You only need a few minutes, but change up the selection of the exercises. Or better yet, if you are already physically active, integrate some of these exercises into your weekly training regimen. In conclusion, we would like to offer three small tips. Stair dancing. When climbing stairs, try springy and smooth movements. Again, we use our ninja principle. Be as light-footed and silent as possible. Karate Kid and the light switch. Choose a light switch or doorknob, which you will use from now on for your facial exercises. Instead of using your hand, you perform the movement with a useful leg swing. Please try a couple of different alternatives. Tie your shoes. Next time when you want to take off your shoes or socks in standing, or if you need to tie your shoelaces, you can of course do this as usual if you want. Most often we bend over and stiffen our hip joint and flex our spine. It is so much smoother and helpful for your fascia if you bend at the hip in a dance-like fashion. When you are down at your shoes, don't come pull up by contracting your back muscles, but shortly bounce your upper body down and forward and then let it rebound upwards via the elastic recoil of the fascia. So our take home message is, we recommend experimenting with our exercises and ideas two to three times per week. A few minutes of stretching and loading of different areas in your body are sufficient in order to result over a period of six months to two years in a renewed fascial network.